Along the Southern California coastline, the ground is already failing, and in one place, it has been sliding toward the Pacific for years. On the Palos Verdes Peninsula, an enormous landslide complex has been moving for decades, but recent measurements show that this motion is no longer subtle. Sections of the hillside are now creeping several centimeters per year, cracking roads, tilting homes, and tearing apart underground utilities. According to state and federal geologists at the U.S. Geological Survey and the California Geological Survey, this is not surface erosion or a shallow slump, but a deep-seated landslide involving millions of cubic meters of earth gradually detaching from stable ground and migrating downhill toward the ocean. What makes this situation dangerous is not how slowly the land is moving today, but how quickly that motion could change. Landslides of this scale do not always fail gradually. When internal friction drops or groundwater pressure spikes, movement can accelerate suddenly, turning a creeping slope into a violent collapse. Studies of the Palos Verdes landslide zone show that large portions of the bluff are already fractured and partially detached, meaning the system is primed, not stable. The risk extends far beyond damaged roads and homes. If a large section of the peninsula were to fail all at once, thousands of tons of rock and soil could plunge directly into the Pacific. According to tsunami modeling studies referenced by coastal hazard researchers, a sudden coastal landslide of this size has the potential to displace enough water to generate a localized tsunami, sending destructive waves toward nearby shorelines within minutes. Most people standing on these cliffs see calm ocean views and expensive homes. What they cannot see is a massive geological system already in motion beneath their feet. And as scientists continue to track accelerating deformation along the Palos Verdes coast, a chilling question begins to form. If this slow collapse suddenly turns fast, how much warning would anyone have before California's coastline becomes the source of its next major disaster? What is happening beneath the Palos Verdes Peninsula is not mysterious once the mechanics are understood, and that understanding makes the risk more unsettling, not less. The peninsula is built from layered sedimentary rock sitting atop weak, water-sensitive clay-rich zones that act like a natural lubricant when saturated. When water seeps into these layers, friction drops and the entire mass above them can begin to slide as a single body, similar to a heavy rug moving once the floor beneath it becomes slick. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, this type of deep-seated landslide is far more dangerous than surface slumps because it involves thick blocks of ground moving together rather than crumbling gradually. Recent monitoring shows that this lubrication effect is increasing. GPS stations and ground-based instruments have recorded accelerating movement following periods of heavy rainfall, with some sections shifting multiple centimeters within months, not years. Rainwater does not just soak the surface, it penetrates deep into fractures, increasing underground water pressure and effectively lifting part of the hillside off its base. Reports from the California Geological Survey note that once pore pressure reaches a critical level, the slope can transition rapidly from slow creep to runaway motion. Earthquakes add another layer of risk. Even moderate seismic shaking can jolt an already unstable slope, briefly reducing friction and allowing gravity to take over. Studies of coastal landslides worldwide show that sudden accelerations are often triggered not by massive quakes, but by smaller events striking slopes that are already weakened. In Southern California, where active faults run both onshore and offshore, this combination of rainfall saturation and seismic shaking is especially concerning. When these factors align, the science points to one conclusion. The Palos Verdes landslide does not need a rare or extreme trigger to change behavior. And if the forces holding it in check weaken just slightly more, the next phase may unfold far faster than anyone living above it expects. California has seen what happens when slow-moving coastal slopes suddenly give way, and the record shows that warning signs are often ignored until damage becomes unavoidable. On the Palos Verdes Peninsula itself, the Portuguese Bend landslide began accelerating in the 1950s, eventually moving more than 30 meters in places and destroying roads, homes, and utilities. Entire neighborhoods had to be abandoned, and sections of roadway were repeatedly rebuilt only to fail again. 
costing tens of millions of dollars over decades. According to the U.S. Geological Survey and California Geological Survey, that slide never truly stopped. It only slowed, demonstrating how long-lived and unpredictable deep coastal landslides can be. Farther up the California coast, sudden acceleration has turned deadly. In 1995, a landslide in La Conchita sent a mass of soil and debris into a seaside community, destroying homes and killing 10 people. Ten years later, in 2005, another collapse struck the same area, killing another 10 residents and burying dozens of houses within minutes. Investigations found that long-term creeping motion combined with water saturation had weakened the slope long before the final failure, a pattern repeatedly documented in post-disaster analyses. While not in California, the Vajon disaster shows what can happen when large volumes of unstable ground suddenly enter water. In 1963, a massive landslide in Italy's Vajon Valley displaced enough water to send a surge over a dam, killing nearly 2,000 people downstream. According to studies by the U.S. Geological Survey and NOAA, the physics are the same in any coastal setting. When large volumes of Earth enter water rapidly, the resulting displacement can produce powerful waves regardless of location. These events share a common lesson. Long periods of slow movement do not mean safety. They often mean stored instability. And as scientists compare these past disasters to the accelerating motion at Palos Verdes today, the question becomes harder to ignore. If history shows how quickly creeping slopes can turn catastrophic, how close is California's coast to repeating that pattern? Scientists watching the Palos Verdes landslide are now focused on whether the current phase of movement represents a long plateau or the lead up to something far more abrupt. According to the U.S. Geological Survey and the California Geological Survey, deep coastal landslides rarely fail without warning signals, but those signals do not guarantee long lead times. Accelerating ground motion, expanding fractures, and rising groundwater pressure can compress the timeline from years to weeks or even days. Monitoring data shows continued deformation across the slide mass, indicating that the system has not stabilized and that stress is still being redistributed within the slope. For the people living above this moving ground, the future is defined by uncertainty. Homes already show cracked foundations and warped walls. Roads require constant repairs, and underground utilities must be repeatedly rerouted as the land shifts. Property values fluctuate, insurance coverage becomes harder to secure, and long-term planning becomes nearly impossible when the ground itself cannot be trusted. According to city and state reports, entire neighborhoods could eventually face relocation if movement accelerates beyond what infrastructure can tolerate turning a gradual geological problem into a permanent human displacement. The consequences of a rapid collapse would extend even further. A sudden failure involving hundreds of thousands to potentially millions of tons of material entering the Pacific could displace large volumes of water, generating a localized tsunami capable of striking nearby coastlines within minutes. NOAA modeling studies show that landslide-generated waves offer little warning time, leaving residents, beachgoers, and coastal workers with few options once the event begins. What makes this threat especially unsettling is how ordinary life still appears on the surface. Families sleep, commute, and build futures on land that is already moving beneath them. And as scientists continue to monitor creeping deformation along the coast, a final question now looms over everyone who lives and works here. If the ground has already begun to fail slowly, what happens to the people above it when it no longer fails at all, but finally lets go beneath their homes?